16 gigabytes of ram is the new minimum on a computer according to many people but with the ongoing ram shortage it's difficult to get your hands on some so i'm going to find out what you can do with only 2 gigabytes of ram this is an hp pavilion elite from 2010 it's based on an am3 platform as an amd phenom 2 x6 cpu and 8 gigabytes of ddr3 ram which we will be lowering right now it's running windows 7 Although it's reasonably lightweight, it's a bit out of date. I could install Windows 11, but that's extremely heavy, especially on older hardware with little RAM. So I turn to Linux, which is typically lighter than Windows in many situations. I started researching lightweight Linux distros, but a lot of them, such as Puppy, Ubuntu, or Linux Lite, are more or less based on Debian, a rock solid stable distribution. So I decided to ditch the middleman and just use Debian itself. With the XFCE desktop environment, it's one of the lightest Linux configurations you can get by default. So that's what I'm going to install. I went to their website and downloaded the net installer, then copied the ISO to a flash drive with Ventor, which allows you to store multiple ISOs on a single drive. Then I rebooted the PC, spammed the escape key to enter the boot menu, selected the flash drive, and ended up in Ventor. I picked the Debian net installer, then install, and now I'm in the Debian installer, which isn't as intimidating as other Linux distros such as Arch or Gen2. Since this is the net installer, it downloads the installation files from the internet, meaning the ISO itself can be really small in size. I selected my language, location, and key map, then it asked me to create a username and password. Then I got to the partitioner and wiped the whole SSD for this Debian install. Don't worry, I backed up everything earlier. I configured the package manager, then got asked to pick a desktop environment. I picked XFCE since it's very lightweight. Then the installer downloaded the rest of the files, which took forever because of my sh internet. It asked me to install the bootloader, so I just put it on the same SSD. Then the installation finally completed and I made it to the desktop. I opened a terminal and installed htop, which is kinda like task manager on windows. It showed that I was using a whopping 400 megabytes of RAM on idle. Windows 11 reduced 10 times as much RAM. One thing to point out is that this is fully fledged 64 bit Linux. 64 bit Windows, which most modern systems come with, requires a minimum of 4 gigabytes of RAM. 32 bit Windows 10 had a minimum requirement of 2 gigabytes of RAM. But starting with Windows 11, there is no more 32-bit builds. So you'd need 4 gigabytes of RAM or higher to even boot into Windows. And that doesn't mean it will run well. What happened? What? <laughs> wow! You know, although I have tons of free RAM right now, I'm about to remove most of it. I found out that although this PC has 8 gigabytes of total RAM, it does so by using 4 2 gigabyte sticks. So I opened the PC and removed all but one stick of RAM so that I only have 2 GB of total RAM. Although DDR3's true minimum capacity is 512 MB, I don't have any 512 DIMMs and I don't feel like spending my life savings on some. I closed it back up, turned it on and it posted. I went to the BIOS and it correctly showed that there's only 2 GB of RAM installed. Then I booted back into Debian and it was using about a quarter of the RAM. But there's this other thing called swap that's being used. Swap is basically virtual memory, which is used in place of real RAM at times. During the Debian installation, the installer created a small swap partition on the SSD, around 8 gigabytes. So does this mean we have 8 gigabytes of extra RAM? Well, yes. But actually, no. You stupid n you see, the biggest disadvantage of swap is that it's way slower than actual RAM. Even DDR3 at 1333 MHz, which is what I have, can transfer data at up to 10.6 GB per second, which is similar to the fastest NVMe Gen 5 SSDs. This is really slow compared to something modern like DDR5 at 5600 MHz, which can do up to 44.8 GB per second. But due to the ongoing RAM shortage caused by AI data centers, you can't fucking buy any without giving up an arm and a leg. DDR4 is going up too. Dark times are ahead. Dark 
times indeed. Aren't you overreacting a bit? No. A typical SATA SSD, like what I'm using, can only do up to around 600 megabytes per second, which pales in comparison to even DDR3. <laughs> so swap will allow us to have more memory, but it won't be as good as real RAM, which we only have 2 gigabytes of. So in order to get the fastest RAM experience, I disabled my swap using this command. Now I'm using only real RAM. With Firefox alone open, I was using 900 megabytes of RAM and 720p YouTube playback would use 1.3 GB of RAM. Geometry Dash works perfectly fine and it almost never uses more than 1 GB of RAM. Same with GTA San Andreas. But both of those games were designed for really sh hardware. Then I loaded up Kronka. It's like if you took old Call of Duty and combined it with Roblox. Maybe that's not such a good comparison. Either way, it's just another game designed for dog sh machines. Here's me playing it on a school computer. Here with Firefox, the game uses around 1.3 to 1.4 gigabytes of RAM and it's completely playable. I didn't think this was enough so I had the wonderful idea of having YouTube play in picture in picture mode while browsing the web. I was using 1.7 gigabytes of RAM with 720p YouTube playing. Then the video started stuttering and when I tried to open Amazon to check on the RAM prices, the whole PC froze, so I had no choice but to force a reboot. This time, I had the 8GB swap partition active simply because I forgot to disable it. But I think a setup like this would be more realistic, as I doubt anyone is seriously using a computer with 2GB of RAM and no swap in the big 25. Actually, with the RAM shortage, you should be grateful for any amount you have. With this much headroom, I wanted to find out how much I could have open, so I opened Firefox and started spawning in tabs. I opened Amazon to check on the DDR5 RAM prices and they aren't looking very good. Then I opened more tabs. I'm even playing NCS in the background. Then I opened GIMP and drew a masterpiece expressing my thoughts on the current situation. I tried getting Minecraft with the official launcher but it failed due to dependency errors. I could have used MultiMC or Prism Launcher but I didn't want to log in with Microsoft and I didn't feel like pirating the game that day. So no Minecraft. Look at all this shit I have open in the background. 20 Firefox tabs, 2 playing videos and 1 running Kronka. I also have GIMP and LibreOffice open. With these, I'm using 1.6GB of RAM, 3.6GB of swap and I'm still able to play Geometry Dash on top of that. But I'm seriously pushing the limits of this setup. I tried maximizing Geometry Dash and it all went to sh**. The whole PC froze and I was using 1.7GB of RAM and 3.5GB of swap. The craziest thing was that even though the system was unresponsive, NCS was still playing in the background. That was me using 2GB of RAM on a computer in 2025. The swap partition seriously helps out a ton when you're on very little RAM. Maybe we should all buy SSDs so that we can use them for swap. Okay, let's all buy hard drives for swap. AI, if you made it this far, that means you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you dislike it, comment your thoughts and subscribe below to the channel. Thanks for watching.